Namaste Soul Tribe, welcome back to the Matrix Oracle. This is a special Equinox pick a card. So in this reading, because of this invitation of honoring the balance of light and day, feminine and masculine, we're going to get some guidance from the subconscious mind. We're going to pick the cards with the ancient stones. I'll tell you, I was not planning to use this deck of cards, but then as I was putting it away, this appeared. And I was like, oh my Lord, there is this portal energy with the equinox when there is harmony uh, that is manifested between yin and yang, a sacred merge, and we're going to get some guidance about this specific type of invitation. So let's look at, I'm going to put this aside. Ooh, interesting. Creativity. Okay, I guess, I guess the cards want, <laughs> to, want to be pulled. So energy rising, creativity, and last but not least... Let's see what we have. I did not plan it that way, but you saw how it happened. It was just, uh, the energies are really strong. And the last one, beautiful, the singing stones. So it says here, transmit your vibration, use your voice. It's number three. Creativity, creative expression, trust your vision. Pile number two. And yes, we we're doing this reverse, but... <laughs> That's how we roll on this channel. Energy rising, vitality, confidence, power, and decisiveness. Okay, some messages from the subconscious mind regarding this equinox energy. And again, look at this. There's, there's some type of portal here opening. Okay, let's get the um, zodiac signs if that's something that you want to uh, support you, to choose your piles. Okay, let's see what we have for pile number. Let's do three first. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No rules. We got Scorpio up. We have Cancer. We have Leo. And we have Aquarius. Pile number three. <laughs> yes. Listen, it seems that there's some type of a maybe a rebalancing act that's happening. Let me get one more. Uh, whoop, the other ones are falling. Ah, all right, put them there. Uh, we got Libra in the center with creativity. We have Gemini. We have Aries and Sagittarius. So that was pile number two. And pile number one. We have Taurus, Capricorn, Pisces, and Virgo. Wonderful. Let's get those piles ready. Again, pick your pile. And some of you, if you feel that you're called by more than one, that's fine as well. Uh, maybe there's a message you need to hear first and then later on. All right. Let's get those piles ready. Pile number one with the Energy Rising card, Taurus, Capricorn, Pisces, and Virgo. It can be your sun sign, moon sign, rising sign. I personally sometimes like to also pick my north node. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> All right. We're not... We're, the cards are already discovering themselves. Some type of reveal for you. Mm, okay. Okay. All right, all of this with mm -hmm. that. I feel this one too. And whoa. <laughs> okay. And this. Okay, they're all here. For you, pile number one, it seems that there's a lot of messages for you at this time through this portal. 
Pile number woof, two. <laughs> it's been happening a lot. The cars are flying. Okay, there's a lot of messages from the subconscious, probably some stories to tell. Um, okay, wow, guidance. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I can't. The energy is just so strong, so strong that the, almost like the cars want to pull themselves. Okay. And this is what. And that's that. That's going to be for you. Pile number two. Wow. Wow. And wow. <laughs> All right. I see you there. Pile number three with the singing stones. Scorpio, Cancer, Aquarius, Leo. Let's see what we have for you, my dear ones. There's a lot that the subconscious mind want to share at this time. And that's going to be it for pile number three. Okay, I'll see you there. Pile number one. Welcome to your messages tapping into your subconscious mind. You picked a beautiful card about energy rising at this time of vitality, confidence, power, and decisiveness. I mean, this is just gorgeous expression. Uh, that is coming through. So let's see how that relates to your subconscious mind. Um, if you chose according to your zodiac, I'm going to put them aside. Okay. Let's see where we start. We have first. I am at home in my body and at peace in my spirit. I welcome clear vision and inspired action. I am ready. Thank you. I want to start already before pulling the others because I feel there's a layer here of messages for you, pile number one. There's something about the equinox energy and how it's triggering your subconscious mind that is tapping into a layer of your vibration that is attuned to a specific vision. And with the eclipse energy here, I don't know if you see, but there is probably a sun behind this moon. And... The full moon here, there might have been something that got triggered for the lunar eclipse in Pisces. We experienced September 17th because this is occurring on the 22nd. There is almost like I'm, I'm seeing a gong, <laughs> you know, like dong. there's something that was shaken wide awake and your subconscious mind here wants to help you translate some of this vision into manifestation, okay? Th this seems to be a great opportunity that is opening up for you, pile number one. Wow, I mean, yin yang. Told you, this energy was just so strong when I saw it. I was like, this is the equinox energy. You, you're the one opening up this gateway with a strong yin-yin mastery here under the vibration. Okay, I pulled both together. This is interesting. I'll just, I feel like they're meant to be um, part of that column here. Let's see. We have the men holding a coin. Where are we? Oh. And... 
the hostilities. Okay, let's see, let's see. We have the rest and rejuvenation and the healer of the ages. You know, it's interesting because I feel that here, this hostility energy is as if you, the, the vibration we're picking up on here that shows self-mastery, that shows growth, that opens up a portal, stem from past hostilities that you had to almost like work with. Maybe you were in an environment, uh, whether it's as a child or current job, past jobs, past relationships. There seems to have to like a lot of maybe ego uh, battles, you know, out of uh, emotional wounds, mental wounds, you know, there, there seems to have had a lot, like in order to get to that vibration, it seems that you had to open up your vision and the vision that it was trying to reveal to you was the power of your manifestation here. The strong manifestation here with a law of harmony, gender and resonance and vibration um, that came from you also transcending with the eagle energy, but also the eclipse energy, knowing how to remove some of your own mental and emotional battles, turmoils, inner wars. And as a result, there's this readiness for you to invite more of your higher self. Here I feel really like almost like a rejuvenation. So be, I would say, be mindful, pile number one, to honor, celebrate this day. Okay. On the 22nd of September, the sun is going to also enter Libra in the Western astrology. And with this celebration of yin and yang, it's showing you an aspect of you that as you're listening to this, is going to come alive into your cells. You see, there was you're ready to channel that energy into your temple. You made space from the past. You only have that card that shows that you know overall there's just so much self mastery and and it. But it came from maybe a part of you that had to be resilient, that had to be strong, that had to be brave and courageous. That I had to also overcome, you know, uh, your own mental patterns that brought you down. I mean, I mean, even seeing some of you like brought down to your knees, that's how deep and low you had to go at times to develop this type of self-mastery. Gorgeous work here of alchemy, pile number one. I want you to know it. I want you to honor it. Honor it into your space. The braveness of your soul. This is going to spark more of your heart's connection. You know, it's almost like when you're honoring yourself and you're giving yourself gratitude and reverence for and humility for all that you had to overcome and transcend, the heart seems to boom, gong. You're going to, oh, oh, when I did this, oh, my Lord, I just felt it in the ether. <sighs> There's going to be an activation of the heart. And some of you that have been working with me, you know, personally or onto the Star Family at the YouTube membership, you know, I talk to you about the perfect fifth in sound engineering, in music harmony, which is also connected to you as a vessel. You are this beautiful orchestra. And when you activate at this perfect alignment here, giving yourself reverence and honor for all that you had to transcend and to experience. There's on this date, this almost like explosion of, of a vibrational attunement that resonates in perfect fifth to your soul. So that means tapping into your soul star chakra and 
below the earth star chakra and that means your purpose on earth there's some type of uh you know mission that is co coming online a deeper vision of things that you have to follow but that are becoming clearer and clearer and that's part of what your subconscious mind wants to to tap into you might not be realizing all the energies that you are feeling and this is coming your way and this is gorgeous okay let's go to the next layer of messages here from your subconscious mind i feel this is coming in layers okay that's the first invitation beautiful all right then we have i love how i asked about the subconscious mind and um this deck came up which is my favorite one for working with the dream state it's the dreams of gaia tarot okay so let's see what we have i'm gonna pull those first death and rebirth so be ready to feel you know like <laughs> to be reborn when we saw this channeling of energy that flew through this person there's a your higher self's energy there's kundalini activation and that means you're going to be reborn with let's see a different version of yourself let's see if we can get some details about this this is whew, wow the seven of cups here speaks a lot with intuition and flow the three of air the three of swords knowledge wow you're tapping into something something like language a certain expression of your light language, light guidance. And you know what? It's so funny. I had not planned this at all. It's almost, this is my star seeds deck. Wow. Wow. Really activating everyone's star potential at this time. I'm so glad, pile number one, you're here. The three of earth. Hmm. In the earth, I told you, earth star chakra. The five of fire, earth. I thought it was fire with this energy, but no. Great. The nine of fire. And that's the one I saw <laughs> that fell. And we're going to put it on top. This is the eight of water. Wow. Okay. Let's pull those now. Patience. Be patient and allow destiny to unfold at its own pace. Creation. Being creative is a wonderful way of witnessing the unfolding of your limitless creative soul. abundance when your heart's intention is to serve humanity doors of abundance naturally open and transcendence transcend your mind's limitations and allow your soul's light to truly shine okay let me get a sip of water here I literally feel like I've been blasted <laughs> by this energy when I, I told you about the heart's resonance. It almost felt like uh, so many etheric, energetical barriers, past limitations were shattered, shattered, okay? Now, with this energy here, okay, remember how I said you were going to also vibrate from the heart into the soul chakra but also the earth chakra okay and as this occurrence happens on the equinox your subconscious mind wants you to honor with patience how things are going to unfold because this is deep energy work and you're here to listen to those messages you know it's sometimes we we don't realize, but the body needs to catch up on to these things. And I, I'll tell you, uh, please make sure you stay hydrated on that day and, and pay attention to 
your thirst, okay? Because you might be processing a lot of energy and not realize it. Some of you that work with my frequencies, my sound healing, I, I tell it to you all the time because when you work with sound healing, every time you're listening to a certain vibration and you have certain cells that vibrate differently and that are lower, it will the cell will lose the water that vibrates to the lower frequency. You will flush it out physically. You will process it out of your body. But that means then you have to replenish. Okay, you have to replenish. And some of you, you're even doing, you know, the guided energy sessions and that's even deeper. Okay, so honor. Okay, the subconscious mind here is saying you're going to be receiving a high frequency activation. Okay, that is meant for you to um, access more clearly with more clarity, uh, more readiness, this new version of yourself. This is something that was always meant to occur, yet there was no shortcut to this because you were meant to be of service with the abundance here and how it's connected to humanity and discard in this deck speaks of shortcuts. There is no shortcut to this process. If some of you are trying to, uh, you know, there's no amount of energy work, don't do more than you need. This is already occurring. And I would say for this, because I feel the intensity of it, I'm not going to prescribe any frequency except the only one I have that's called your subconscious mind. Maybe some of you the day before on the 21st, sleep with your subconscious, the subconscious mind frequency that you'll see listed here. And I'll list it also in the description box. Okay. Um, because it's all very, very particular to you. There is a specific creation that wants to flow through you. And you see how it's almost like it's coming here and then it's coming back up and then it's going to go back there. Okay. So there's a flow, a certain way where the waves go up and down, a certain ebb and flow. And this transmission you're receiving, okay, is actually making sure that you're letting go of any need to speed up the process, to go faster than the music or get to the goals. And it's saying, enjoy the ride of this transformation because through each detail that is going to occur within the next days, okay? Um, there's, there's certain ways of interpre pre interpreting the world, seeing the world, feeling the world, that is very specific to you and how you're meant to create this new version. There's like a, there's just, this card in this deck speaks of gratitude. And here it's almost like the version of you that is being born is out of what we saw. This, this brave soul that wanted to feel joy, to feel mentally happy, you know, both mental and emotional balance, happiness, mastery, and it's coming alive. It's coming online. Okay. And when I mean online, it's because our bodies are just like a machine, much more complex in its own ways, but has mechanism that works with the elements and the fiber of the universe. And this is why you're here. So as this happens, the, you're transcending some of the limitation that in the past were maybe not giving you access or and clarity to a certain knowledge. This is there's a certain knowledge that is meant for you, okay? That uh, it feels very much connected to your lineage, to your star connection, okay? How you related to the stars. There's definitely something, um, you know, with the, with the Zodiac here, I feel some of you may be connected to the Pleiades. Some of you, you could have like a significant uh, Farmahal. That's one of the four royal stars, okay? Um, in particular, it's something in, in your chart that gives you a specific access to then a seed bloom into 
I, I feel here, I, I did not expect to feel this, but I feel this is a sacred offering. You're almost like you become the offering, but for some of you, there's also something that is meant to be gifted to humanity. So it could be a service, uh, something that you're manifesting as a career, uh, as an expression. Some of you that are artists, hardest, it could be even a, a track, a song, a music, a painting, anything, a dance, a choreography. A, I mean, the amount of possibilities here are unlimited, limitless, limitless. Wow. I mean, the subconscious mind is filled with information, but this one in particular, there is a receptivity through your self mastery and all the healing that you've done. And some of you, like if you're watching this and you're still feeling a lot of shake-up energy, okay, go and check out the lunar eclipse reading, okay? So that's, and I, I will put this also as well. Let me see. Um, let me write that down. <laughs> Subconscious mind and lunar eclipse. Oh, yes, the lunar eclipse. Perfect. There might be something here if you're not in that energy, but you know, we're channeling the picker cards in accordance to the cosmic dance. This is why we're seeing a flow of a specific offer. And you're a part of this offering. It's an extension of you. It's something you're creating with the womb that is shining like this heart. And also you're speaking it into manifestation because your vision becomes more clear. This is gorgeous energy. I'm loving this. I'm sending you many cosmic blessings your way. Pile number one. Thank you for <sighs> tapping into this energy with you. Really. I thank the <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Namaste. If you chose pile number two, those are your messages from your subconscious mind. So this equinox energy. And if you chose with your zodiac placement, we have here a Libra, Aries, Sagittarius, and Gemini. Okay, we're going to put this aside and a look at this beautiful card that speaks of creativity. I mean, the, the energy of this equinox is, is, is quite intense. Pile number one just made me vibrate and that was just a very, very beautiful to feel. And it seems that there's something here about you, pile number two, that is an extension of this with the feelings, creative expression and trust your vision. It's almost like an embodiment. You, your, your creativity is expressing something, especially on the heart level, that is highly moving. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see those messages. So they came in two parts, which, you know, I didn't know how this was going to manifest with that many cards. Um, but that's part of the fun, right? <laughs> Let's see what we have for you. Pile number two. Ooh, I shed habits that hinder my truth. I release and renew. A lot of shedding probably with this moon. You see the crescent moon here? Okay. Let me see here. This is going to be the last quarter. There's something, you know, your subconscious mind is saying here. As you're witnessing this reading, this is for the equinox. Just before, you know, on the 17th, we had the lunar eclipse. On the 22nd, we're having this energy. Now, let me look for you at the date of the last quarter, to be precise. Okay, and there's something in terms of time, in terms of you honoring timing on the 24th. There's something else that wants to be shed. And this is your message from your subconscious mind to allow this to come to light with grace. Okay, let's, let's get more. I have unlimited potential and claim my purpose. All I need is within me. And I feel with this that this, this next layer you're shedding is going to make you fully grasp the, the full spectrum of a part of you that is in need to self-express. You know, it's almost like I feel your presence 
moving people. And what I mean is move their heart. You know, your embodiment of whatever it is relating to is, is meant to move people's heart. Ooh. Okay, now is the time to integrate all that I have gathered. So it's coming into, you know, alignment. Honor this whole thing, your subconscious mind, you know, that was like, there's, there's, you're peeling layers, okay? And you're being asked to integrate with each layer. Some of you, you know, I do the astrology of the sacred dance, especially uh, in terms of the cosmic forecast around the sun and the moon. So there's major alignments when the sun and the moon merge and we have a collective intention, a collective invitation to see certain things because it's connected to your third eye, both the sun and the moon. When you work with Kundalini, your life force. So as you're working with this intention on the new moon, then there's a square on the first quarter and the last quarter that creates a sacred fire. You know, like a certain friction. So almost like, um, <laughs> you know how I see it? It's almost like one time I had this image of almost like an eye surgery. You're, you know, you're getting like this more, this layer, this veil removed on the first and last quarter. And then when you're on the full moon, there's this illumination. You see more clearly of something. And there's certain things here that with this equinox energy, that you're getting to see more clearly. Something else is meant to be revealed and we'll see if the cards want to shed some light on this. Let's see. We have my emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. See, another, like everything I just told you is about the cycles, okay? They're going a little deeper in the cycle, uh, but you know, I, I try to not just overwhelm too much people with this. Um, we have also movement awakens my spirit. Wow, you, you seem to be so connected to the moon cycles. Now the moon in tarot is the high priestess. Are you a high priestess or high priest? Someone that is meant to be a channel for spirit. This is why, uh, this is what it is really, a channel for spirit. Ultimately, I do believe that we're all meant to be channels for spirit, but some of us um, more so inclined naturally, especially here with this, this um, almost like draping that I feel very um, priest-like, priestess-like. I unleash my wildness and choose to be free. Yeah. And I was just mentioning how she was covered here. And here we have the unleashing. There are certain things that maybe you didn't realize in the past. That was casting a shadow on your potential. Probably an emotion because I felt so much of a heart. Like So it's almost like your mind made you feel a certain way. And the way it, you know, the way the mind makes the heart feel, especially we're talking about equinox where there's self-mastery between yin and yang, mind and heart. The way the mind was making the heart, that was disallowing you to fully activate your heart chakra and make it bloom into this, its fourth dimensional complex body here. Okay, some of you might understand this as far as being multidimensional. It's from physical, emotional, uh, mental, and then spiritual. So there, was, there was a block between layers because a certain belief about yourself. Also about what was possible for you to manifest. Maybe through your creativity. Some of you, it's just like um, there was maybe lack of self-confidence in your vision or in expressing what made your heart sing or your heart, you know what I mean, your soul sing. It's just, it doesn't have to be singing per se. Some of you, it will. Um, but there was something here and there's something, and there's, there's still an element 
that needs to be revealed. And again, it's on the 24th, so it's literally just two days after, after the equinox. So you might receive all of this uh, simultaneously, you know. Okay, let's see. Wow, look at that. Seven chakra, Archangel Uriel. Crown activation. Crown activation. Ooh. You know what? Mm -mm. I feel this is here. Okay. Second chakra, Archangel Arya. Love it. You see here with the crown and the creativity, you're meant to create something from source. I told you, this feels like a channel for source here, pile number two. So then that's why working with the cycles and the collective, the collective intention, the collective revelation, what does humanity need at this time? And obviously it's also through your own fulfillment through your own dance and movement with this cycle, okay? Indecision, okay. I feel like this, there's, okay, some of you, as far as maybe there was, a, there's something about your path that might create, you know, this or that, this or that, a separation, okay? But remember, this is a subconscious mind trying to help you with this on your journey. Choose the, choose the movement, that brings you closer to where your heart sings. Angel of strength, you will be supported. Archangels, angels. I mean, this deck doesn't, it's this deck of cards is not about angels and archangels. There's some of it, but you're receiving a lot of divine support. Pile number two, you are so connected to the divine. Look at this, ancient wisdom running wild within your veins. Unleash it, unleash it. There's, there's certain things here. And we might see this in the second part of uh, the messages. Okay, I feel that might be more locked in here. What is creating this, this tension? And then victory. You're going to do great. Okay, some of you, if you're watching this and this energy of the equinox, uh, plus the lunar eclipse, everything that's going on. It's just, it's been so cosmically active. Okay. So first I've, I'm, I'm not going to give uh, more than just the subconscious mind frequency for the equinox because we're, that was very strong how the subconscious mind wanted to help with this energy portal of self mastery between yin and yang. Okay. And for you here, pile number two, there's something that you're meant to create very clearly with source. You know, I've been doing, um, I, I love doing workshops and um, I'm not talking about like just creating my own, but I'm talking about participating in workshops, uh, seminars and things like this, you know, self-development, learning about certain things. I just love to learn. And in many of my recent workshops, there's a connection more and more so that I'm feeling that is with spirit. You know, working with the spirit of your book, the spirit of your business, the spirit of whatever you want to create. You want to manifest a house, working with the spirit of the house that you're calling in, working with the spirit of the job you want to manifest. You know, some of you, that's something that you needed to hear. I feel that it's, it's the spirit is also connected to the heart. You're definitely, with this card, I should have seen it before, but you know, you're a channel for spirits to flow through, to open up gateways, not just for yourself, but for others to grasp certain things. And there's certain things here that we are more and more so um, getting uh, into awareness with this reading. Okay, so let's see. You moving to the cycles is helping your channel to lead you to your highest path and feel supported and guided on this transformation. I feel this, this, you know, might require some of your, you know, uh, faith. Faith is the word. Faith. Believe in your higher purpose. You're here after all. Ugh. 
more offering that you're receiving. But you're receiving the same way some of your pile number two. You seem to be highly generous of, of a heart and soul, kind and compassionate. And what the universe wants to show here is that the same way you extend your energy to others, you're also getting it back from the universe. So that is a mirror that the universe wants you to hear and remember. Okay? Remember. As within, as without, as above, so below. What you're extending, you're also receiving. Eight of earth. And I say, because look at all this, this light that's coming, especially from you. Your, your temple, your vessel, so much connection to source, so much guidance. You might be a spiritual guide. You might be here to guide part of the ascension process, the great awakening in whatever shape or form that is meant for you. Okay. The five of air. This is where I feel like, because remember, we have this last layer. There's a mask. There's a perception of yourself or a perception, um, something you're not seeing that we need to transcend with the, you know, and alchemize with the dragonfly. The dragonfly, the start is this nymph state. And then through a certain chemistry, a certain specific temperature, I think they stay four years in that state of nymph um, before they get that alchemical process to become this beautiful um, insect. Then we have thought. Okay. There's something here to alchemize within the thought patterns. Okay. And this, this I think I said it to you. That how you're not, like if there's a thought that you're telling yourself about maybe a way that you're not seeing yourself fully. This is going to lower your access. So it's almost like you're self-denying your own access to all the potential of your heart field. And it is much stronger than the mind's. Okay? Mind, electrical field, heart, magnetic much stronger, 5,000, if not more. Look at this, love. There's something about your perception of your generosity, of your kindness, of how gracious and grateful and reverence you have for others, maybe caring. And maybe there's an over, you know, extended of that energy. Let's see. We have the Ace of Fire. Hmm. The union, wow, you're getting all, all types of beautiful confirmation that, uh, you know, at the end of this moon cycle, you know, before we start the new moon, the, the next new moon will be on the 2nd of October. So before October arrives, there's, there's a, 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 you're totally transforming into a, a more unified version and loving version of yourself. We got the 10 of water fulfilled the eight of swords the eight of air mm. you see the self-sacrifice here and the knowledge okay let me make sure we can see it all and then we're going to bring this those cards we have guidance okay I told you some place, soul guidance, spiritual guide, mm -hmm. reflection. I'm going to read this, but I just feel an advancement. Okay. All right. It says here in the guidance, you are not alone. You're guided by masters and teachers of the highest realm. You have reflection, 
See all aspects of yourself through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self. An advancement, a strong energy is propelling you forward. Follow the steering of your heart. It's so funny because it says follow the steering. And I saw in my I saw something about stripping, you know, stripping off whatever was keeping your, your heart tied. Okay, this is weird. Sometimes my eyes just see total different letters and I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. For you as well, I'm going to take a water break here. Hmm. There's so much to transmute. Make sure you stay hydrated on the equinox. There's a lot of like solar, strong solar flares that we're receiving. And for you, pile number two, there is something about that I want to share with you if you don't know about this, about the law of one, about the law and raw consciousness. There's different layers of mastery and different layers of souls. And there is here a very strong um, field that I tap into as far as the people that chose pile number two that are connected to having mastered the lessons of love, okay, of compassion. But they need to ascend to the level of mastery of wisdom, which is more of the mind. Okay, there's different layers of that ascension. Okay, and I see this a lot happening in relationship where some have mastered, you know, love, keeping their heart open, even through the pain, uh, whatever trials that were put in their, uh, in their, on their journey. And there's the one with the mind uh, that may have a hard time to keep their heart open, but they gathered strong uh, wisdom from you know their mental patterns um, mindset and also you know a bunch of also aptitude that we need to bring together okay and i feel as some of you there's something with the over sacrificing the not you know maybe surrounding yourself still with people that don't see or honor your potential that keeps you from weaving fully this, this, this reality into life, okay? Almost like some, as if you, you're letting yourself still be tied down by a certain thought, okay? And that could be attracting, you know, here with this mastery that I feel from the heart, I feel at pile number two, you're someone that probably has had many heartaches and it was still able to bounce back. You know, you feel like you have a, a, a strong heart resilience. But what we were saying about you tapping into that next level of your heart field is that some of the wisdom of your mind, okay, maybe still letting certain patterns repeat, giving people excuses overextending your energy, especially here, there's a certain thing you're repeating in your mind or keep on attracting because your mind is thinking a certain way, which leads you to attract certain manifestation of event. This is where the last layer on that quarter uh, moon on the 24th, that you're going to have some greater details. I will have uh, an astrology forecast for this. So stay tuned to the channel. Um, if you know, you're feeling this coming in this yet, this little aha moment, we're not getting some precision about this, but we know it is a mental pattern. First of all, because we're tapping in collective people, okay, a group of people, but know that there is a certain wisdom, a certain knowledge. So some of you, it could be as simple. So for me, um, you know, I'm in partnership with my soul partner that he was the one that taught me about narcissism. I had not seen this. I could not identify it for many years because I had such an open heart and a capacity to forgive and, you know, renew my bond, my love. Okay, so some of you, there's something here and I had to like learn about this. It was very hard. 
it was very hard to to you know it was some of you maybe that's part of the things um that you don't want to let yourself feel but no one thing is that when you as a soul guide you're not meant to rescue anyone there's I, i've posted about this you know a few times in the past on my instagram about this quote that says uh, it's a medicine woman prayer you're you're not seeing others as powerless so when you're trying to find excuses or trying to do things for them fix for them uh, answer for them or, or whatever for them you know um the, the you're robbing the opportunity for people to show their true colors, show their own potential. It doesn't have to be positive or negative. It is none. It is neutral. Whatever is meant to be the outcome will be the outcome. Okay, so I feel that this is something that you need to learn that is part of your next level. And there is going to be a stream of creativity for me It was amazing when I started putting boundaries with those type of relationship that was narcissistically based. I totally expanded, totally expanded. I know, and I see this, this is coming for you, a version of yourself where you put back this love into yourself. And that's part of the guidance and the spiritual uh, teachings that are meant to be part of your self-expression. Whether it's through your art, of painting, composing, writing, just sharing by your presence. This is part of your soul's teaching. So some of you may be uh, looking into the law of one, raw consciousness could be supportive at this time. Uh, yeah, and you might want to meditate with my subconscious mind frequency. This is helping you. I, in the background, I use a mantra that is supposed to almost like I remember first time I used that mantra, I, I, I saw a door open in the layer between my conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And I was like, what? <laughs> what is going on? It was gorgeous. So I'm putting that mantra in the subliminals. You can still hear it. Okay. And it's listed. I describe always what I put in the frequencies. Um, but I was amazed. So this is something that can help you at this time. That's your message for you, pile number two. I'm sending you many blessings. Please like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Pile number three. Let's look at your messages from your subconscious mind. For zodiac signs, we have Cancer, Scorpio. We have Aquarius and Leo. I'm going to put this on the side, okay? And your card is the Singing Stones. Beautiful card that says, transmit your vibration Use your voice. Mm. Wow. Okay. So there's two phases of messages, okay, which I didn't know it was going to unfold this way, but it makes sense with the amount of cars that we're getting. Okay. All right. Let's see what your subconscious mind has to share with you, pile number three. All tied up. Deceit, door to personal healing and happiness. Oh, remember the equinox, it creates this portal energy field. You're stepping out of this into a different era. Angel of balance. Wow, what are you doing? And walking away. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, right away, I just want to share the first layer that I'm feeling before we look at this, is that when you use your voice, whether it's singing, whether it's incantation, whether it's prayers, maybe some of you are praying or hoping, or wishing, even journaling, that you want to remove yourself from a certain Uh, ties. Maybe some of you it's karmic patterns. Maybe it's attracting people that lie or lies, illusions, deceit, deception. Okay. As you use your voice, you're able to open up this new doorway with more peace and harmony that is offered, especially as this energy for the equinox is all about balance. 
you're being gifted also with this beautiful type of transmission energy from the sacred geometry, whether of the pyramid or those stones, that you're transmitting this as almost like a request. I feel this energy just shoots up to the heavens and is going to remove it. There's a removal that's happening for you, pile number three, with this equinox energy, okay? Past ties, karma, karmic contracts, deceptions, illusions are being removed, especially through the power of your voice, through the power of your vibration. Yes. Then we have, I trust the mystery of life. My dreams reveal that magic is real and anything is possible. I don't know why I feel I want to put this one here. We'll see where it goes. And this one here. I focus on what is working. Hmm. There is medicine in my shadow. Nice. Very nice. And I meet resistance with kindness. Beautiful. Pile number three. It seems that there is a specific role that you have in terms of vibration. A specific dream that you're meant to catch, to grasp, to ground for us collectively. Part of this dream, okay, what your subconscious mind wants you to say, because it is, it seems to be very much to work itself with the mysteries of life, with acknowledging the shadows and aspects uh, that were hidden uh, from human nature overall, okay, even working with the medicine of the body, of stillness, of surrendering. It seems that with this equinox energy, what the subconscious mind field wants you to honor is that all the karmic ties and situations, all the illusions and deceptions and some of your betrayals, okay, things you had to remove and walk away from, were part of this beautiful um, mastery of working with vibration, okay? Some of you, it was also, um, you know, the power of the voice, the power of creation through vibration, through focused energy, okay? Through intention. I feel pile number three, you signed up for learning very deeply, um, almost like I'm hearing crash course. <laughs> like, you know, like I want to learn this and there was a lot that had to be integrated in this lifetime. Um, about the law of attraction, the law of the re resonance, the law of... It's almost like the laws of the universe. And with your voice, some of you might be called to use mantra, prayers, again, incantation, anything that makes you express the sound out of your body. For me, it, I know I love to use mantra. You could see it in my sound engineering I love to include them. I've seen how much it speeds up the energy, the alchemy of re revealing what the shadow the, wants to share or the medicine, giving the body medicine, giving the soul and heart potential for shifting the reality, shifting the focus, okay? I also want to extend this advice if you don't like to sing, because some people don't really like to sing, okay? And that can be something. Um, you might want to hum. hum. When you do this, you will start feeling your teeth vibrate together. Know that 
every teeth in your mouth are connected to your organs. Know that each zodiac sign is connected to an organ. And that means that through the teeth, you're connected to the zodiac, you're connected to the stars in ways that when you're humming, you can activate some of the vibration to release the karmic ties, to release the illusion and unleash a certain medicine. You know, like here I am sharing with you some of my personal practices, pile number three. I feel there's something about your own rituals, your own practices that are going to help you open up a new door, a new era for your manifestations, okay? Yeah, so that's the layer one of your messages here. You you seem very deep into alchemy, uh, being a magician, seeing the magic of this world. What else? I've been drinking a lot for this reading. We're processing so much energy at this time. If you want to work with music, I'm only advising my subconscious mind frequency for this, okay? Because there's a lot going on right now. And all I want for you is to have communication with maybe some of you with what you saw here, some of the specific rituals and details that you need to implement to support you with bringing more of that self-mastery into the laws of the universe. I feel this is part of your vibrational uh, transmission, an awareness of the quantum field. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see it before I, you know, it's almost like before I talked about all of this, I did not see it fully. You have a strong connection to the quantum field and obviously from there, creating, weaving into reality. Remember the dream catcher weaving into reality, anything you focus on, it was there. Now that I cleared the space, I'm able to see it better. See how magic, like, readings are just always, like, I love, I love readings. <laughs> okay. Wow. What? Describe. You're weaving, you're writing, you're, you're scripting your reality. And th this reminds me of Thoth energy, you know? A little bit of the scare. There's some ancient knowledge that you have access with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the Ten of Swords. The Nine of Earth. The Mother. Whew. I don't know why I had this big sigh, almost like if to get to that level. Yeah, there was a lot to process for you to get to that level. The journey, oh, look at this portal energy. Probably had to experience a lot of dichotomy here. Emotions. And, wow, the nine of water, nine of cups. So much. You're, you're, you're receiving with this. You're receiving and transmitting. You see how she seems so focused on, on letting herself receive with this third eye open, receiving the transmission of the universe, the access. Now with this equinox energy, it seems after you transcend all that we've, we've been you know, talking about, there's an access to the quantum field that is shaping your next part of the journey. Mm -hmm. You're going to be scripting with the universe 
in alignment with the emotions that you want to feel. This is going to open up that gateway towards, a, it feels like it's a phase of life where you're much more nurtured, you know, first yourself. There's so much more gratitude that is experienced and a lot of creativity here. Some of you, if, you know, having a child is part of that, it, it could be, um, you know, you're birthing a rainbow child, you know, connected to um, the stars. Let's see what else. Strength. You're being guided by the cosmos. Stay strong and positive outcome is assured. You know, see, I told you, you had you really become a master of your own emotions. Magnificent. Or magnificence. You are amazing, magnificent, and unique. But most importantly, you are enough. Mm. Feels like it was, you know, part of the emotions. Gratitude. <laughs> Universal love shines through the miracles of life all around you. And freedom. Follow your heart and nurture your soul with love and freedom to grow. I love when I just read the, word, the exact words that I'm just mentioning. Okay. Um, what I love here is that for you, pile number three, this equinox is really symbolizes a, a, um, a drastic, you know, quantum leap out of a certain cycle of attraction. You've learned a lot from it. You've learned a lot from your shadow. Now you're moving into a phase where you're realizing how much of the strength and power from that experience, from those cycles of experiences, and you're able to scribe, you know, with the quantum field, exactly what you want to now experience it seems that you're really more focused on your heart like as far as like feeling free to you know experience relationships that feel reciprocated um where there's gratitude and reverence um but there's also a lot of depth i feel that that's part of you know uh what forged you is a lot of depth through your experiences and you're transmitting this this vibration that's going to attract a lot of similar souls that had to transcend that have this 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 heart's wisdom <laughs> that's all i can say it feels like a lot of heart wisdom um that wants to come through. And I feel that, you know, with this, there's a renewal of your life. There's a renewal of what is possible for you to create. You're very much aware now of how you're creating with the universe. You're much more mindful of who you're letting in your circle or be part of your vibration, you know? And it's just giving you a lot of, it's almost like a, a rewards. I feel a lot of rewards, uh, divine rewards blessing you. Some of you, maybe it was, you know, paying karmic debts or understanding certain karmic cycle you're entering a phase of dharma you know that's what i feel a phase of dharma where you're going to put all of this magnificent strength and courage into a life that you're designing consciously co-creating with source you see it it's like that evenness you know you're part of a whole um that wants to create with source and wants to be based off, you know, positively, you know, 
almost like I'm here and positively building up, you know, compounding emotions where people could, could almost like gather and just get back from each other just for each other's presence you know again like imagine like when you're singing and i don't know if some of you have experienced being part of a choir oh oh the choir one of my greatest experience was when i was part of a gospel choir it wasn't long when i was studying music but i could not forget ever that experience of the voices blended together and how it was just carry my soul into the field okay so some of you that might be something that speaks to you uh you know the blending of and it doesn't have to be through singing it's through the presence of each other you know being part of like each other's circle or just presence uh sometimes <laughs> i just recently connected with someone and started leaving a few messages and said, oh i don't want to I don't want to leave you too many messages. I honor your time. Um, but I, I just f kind of forgot, you know, you feel like an old friend I'm connecting back with. And I love those moments. I don't know you, pile number three, but I feel this is something you're craving for. Okay. Uh, this type of connection, soul connection, soul fulfillment. There's just so much soul for you, pile number three. And this is what your subconscious mind is um, hinting you, is this arrival in your journey. Obviously, there's more coming and you're creating more consciously now, co-creating more consciously. But um, there is this reverence with the dichotomy of your path. Some of you, you might have a life path number 11, 22, 33, like a, those type of numbers um, that invite, you know, two paths. You know, number 11 invites the path of one and the path of two. Uh, 22, the path of two and four. Again, that's something that maybe you resonate or want to look into if you don't know your life path. Okay, this is math based. Okay, that's what I have for you, pile number three. This was beautiful. I feel almost uh, like a... It's a warmth in my heart and in my soul. It feels like a little bit like a buzz. <laughs> but, you know, like, um, if you could get, I wouldn't say drunk on love, but drunk on fulfillment, on the wish fulfillment. You're entering a phase with this that your subconscious mind wants to show you that you have transcended a lot. And you're entering a phase where there's going to be much more fulfillment and going to be received and, 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 and celebrated, you're going to receive and give in ways that feel much more aligned with uh, what you've wanted to weave into manifestation, my dear pile number three. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light, and remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow.